welcome back to Anna and Lane. Today I'm doing a Q&A video for you where I basically just answer a bunch of questions that I got asked on Instagram and Facebook because I put up a post being like, ask me random questions. So some of them, actually a lot of them are beauty related but a couple of them are quite random. So I hope you guys enjoy today's video. Just as well, before we start, just want to let you know that I'm doing three tutorials in a row after today's video. So if you're a little bit sad that today's not a tutorial, then I'm sorry, I can't do tutorials every week, but there are tutorials coming for Christmas and New Year's. The first question is from Facebook and it comes from Elisa Bock, I hope I pronounced your name right, um, but you asked what do I like about living in Melbourne and for me number one would be the climate, uh, it's definitely a lot warmer here than it is in New Zealand, although winter was freezing so it's kind of like I like the extremities. Um, in the winter, it's just like nice winter, you know, weather where you can still wear coats and scarves and boots and stuff. I was a bit worried that I wouldn't be able to wear all my lovely winter clothing um, living in Australia, but definitely in Melbourne, you can get away with your winter clothes in winter. And then spring was beautiful. Like, we're just about to head into summer, um, but spring was stunning. Like, it was warm days, but they weren't too hot, and it was just that perfect kind of temperature. Summer is going to be stifling. I'm going to enjoy it, but it certainly will be quite a change, but I'm really looking forward to that. Um, so yeah, I definitely love the climate. The balmy evenings are just perfect. And I also love that there's always something going on, so you can never really be bored in Melbourne, which I love. The next question comes from Melissa Withers, who asks what my skin and hair routine is. Now, I did do a skincare routine video um, recently or like a few months ago. Things have changed a little bit since then, but basically what I do, the mornings are very simple. I wake up, my skin's already cleaned from the night before, very thoroughly clean. So I basically let the natural oil stay on my skin when I wake up in the morning because it does provide that protective layer for the day. I just wake up, I put on some moisturizers, some moisturizing serum and eye cream and then that's all I do in the mornings. I just basically moisturize my skin. In the evenings, I remove my makeup with either makeup wipes or like a cleansing oil or something, then I will double cleanse my skin with two other cleansers. One of them obviously like an exfoliating cleanser just to really like buff my skin and it gets rid of all the excess makeup and um, dead skin cells and that. And then I use a cream cleanser that you wash off. So it's not one of those cream cleansers for dry skin that you put on, you wipe away and then it sits on your skin. You do wash it off, but it's a cream cleanser so it doesn't contain any foaming agents which doesn't break my skin out and doesn't irritate it or dry it out. So that's what I do. And then when I get out of the shower, um, having double cleansed, I will do my moisturizing serum and moisturizer and eye cream again. And as for hair care, um, I basically only wash my hair about every five to seven days and I just use like a real basic shampoo and only on the roots. I don't even bother about like scrubbing the ends of my hair. I just let whatever was in my roots fall down on top of them and clean it that way. And then I use a deep conditioning mask on my ends. If I've washed my hair twice in a week, I'll use a different just basic conditioner. Um, on my ends like I don't like to overuse the mask so I kind of use my mask about once a week yeah and then when I get out of the shower I just put some heat protectant spray through it like give it a towel dry put some heat protectant spray through it let it sit for a bit so it's kind of naturally dries a little bit and then use my blow dryer and then um, yeah then I just style it as usual and use like hairspray and stuff to kind of fix it into place Nikita Tate asks, if you're running extremely late for work, what are three products you would throw on before dashing out the door? Now, I probably would actually just ring up my work and say, I've slept in, can I be half an hour late because I want to make sure I look okay, which sounds silly, but um, I don't really end up having a very good day if I've had to just rush my morning and run out the door and I look terrible. Like if I was running that late that I didn't have time to put makeup on, um, I'd probably just ring up and ask to come in a bit later like that you know it very rarely happens because I'm very good at getting up on time and making sure I'm at work on time I never really am late so it would be like an extreme case of like my phone alarm didn't go off or something but um, if I had to I would uh, fill in my eyebrows or like I said I'll take some eyebrow pencil I would take concealer and uh, Probably mascara because I could use my eyebrow pencil on my upper lash line to kind of define that if I wanted to And I'm always going to have a lip product in my bag floating around So that's always in there so therefore I can use that as well Delani Timo Booth, I hope that's how you pronounce your name as well um, Asks, would you rather fight 100 duck sized horses or one horse sized duck? 
and what are your reasons? And this was so easy. I read this question and was like, I know exactly what I would pick and it would be a hundred duck sized horses because I have a fear of birds. Like I have a serious phobia of like birds and therefore a bird, like a duck the size of a horse, I'd probably piss myself and faint. So I would rather a whole bunch of little horses that are like this, you know, the size. Um, even though that would probably like still attack me and I would be in a lot of pain. I don't know, I just would not face a giant bird that would be just, I'm getting sick thinking about it. So yeah, definitely a hundred duck sized horses. My lovely friend Hannah Carson um, wants to know if I have any animals and if I don't, what would I have if I could have an animal? Now I don't have my own puppy, I've got like my family dog which lives now with mum obviously in Christchurch. Um, Heidi, she's adorable, she's a little Jack Russell and she's got short legs, um, so she's kind of like a sausage dog but she's a Jack Russell, she's just a short legged breed um, and she's so cute and so just one of the best dogs ever um, but she's not really like my dog like I see her when I go home but if I could have one here I would definitely have a Pomeranian just because they're little, they're adorable, they're always smiling and you could kind of have it inside. Um, so yeah, I would definitely have a Pomeranian. If I was settled down to like a family and we were in like a big house with a big backyard and everything, I would look at getting like a husky or something because I think they're beautiful. But at this stage, like I could not have a husky for years and years. Like we'd have to be really settled down and willing to take it for walks every day, like big walks. So it wouldn't be really fair to have a big dog, but I would have a little puppy that could live inside. The next few questions come from Mel McCarthy. Um, there's about four of them. <laughs> So the first one is, what is the weirdest thing you've ever used on your face? And I had to think about this one, but then I remembered, <laughs> this is such a funny story. Okay, I used GIF on my face, and before you freak out, I would obviously never ever recommend using GIF ever on your skin, but I was 14, and I had been to a dance, it was the Christchurch Boys High dance, like the junior dances, and when you go, you get like a number written on your hand and vivid, um, like a permanent marker, um, just to like, I think it was to collect your bags after or something, but I stayed at my friend's house and I remember sleeping on my hand like this all night because I was real tired and I woke up in the morning and I had a, a number like printed on my skin and I tried everything, like exfoliators, cleansers, everything obviously, nothing took it off and I was like, how I'm using GIF because that will get it off. It certainly did help, but that's horrible to use it on your skin. like. Oh, I cringe at the thought now, but yeah, I've used GIF on my skin. Mel also asks, if I only have room in my suitcase for five beauty products, what would they be? This is kind of similar to that other one that Nikita asked, but it's more like beauty products. So if I'm only allowed five beauty products in general, it would definitely be um, a cleanser, moisturizer, um, and then my brow product, my mascara, and my concealer. Because that way I could look put together during the day and that, but then I've got my cleanser and moisturizer and stuff and I could really like double cleanse with the cleanser. Even though it's the same cleanser, I could just cleanse twice with that and then put moisturizer on my skin so my skin wouldn't dry out at night. So that's what I would do. It would mean that I would smell because I wouldn't have any deodorant and my hair would look a great mess because I wouldn't have any hair products. And I wouldn't even have any body wash. I would stink, but I would look pretty. And the next question from Mel is, what has your greatest makeup failure been? And what's my greatest makeup failure? If I could think back to when like, like a regret, I guess, from my childhood. I used to do my own makeup for dancing competitions when I was very young, so I would have been like 11. Um, and I thought it was really cool to have bright blue eyeshadow just on the lid. Like I didn't blend it out or anything with like a transition colour or anything, it was just blue. Um, and then my winged liner, we used to do double flicks, but it was like a fishtail. So you'd be like, whoosh, like you'd put, you'd do it all on the top and then you'd go whoosh, and then do a downwards one as well. And I don't know what that was or what that was supposed to do from stage, but that's what we were told we meant to do for um, stage makeup. So I had like fish on my eyes. And the next question from Mel is, who was your inspiration to start your own YouTube channel? And I was kind of thinking about this. Um, it probably was just all of the YouTubers I was kind of watching at the time when I was like inspired to do it. Like I'd kind of been watching them for a few months and thought it was really cool and thought I'd definitely love to do that. 
One of them being obviously Shannon because she's every good like Kiwi girl's inspiration because she's made it. Um, she's living off it and she just is so successful so I guess she's obviously every Kiwi girl's inspiration. Um, but I also at the time loved watching people like Al Fowler and kind of like the like old school kind of YouTube gurus like they had been around for ages and they were like big on YouTube when I started watching YouTube like Shannon didn't even probably she probably had like maybe a hundred thousand subscribers but these other gurus that I was watching were like at the million already but now some of them don't even really make YouTube much anymore they don't barely ever put out videos and now Shannon's just like whoosh, like killing it so it's really cool to see people's progress and see where they go with life but definitely um, yeah Shannon probably it was my biggest inspiration to start my channel like anything that you do publicly you'll get people's opinions whether it's positive or negative how do you deal with the comments so for me I'm pretty lucky I basically never get bad feedback or negative comments like it's very rare I don't get people just being like ew you look ugly or something like that like no one ever says that to me and I feel very blessed not to receive that kind of comment I'll probably get a bunch of it now on this um, video but yeah I basically don't really get hate comments um, I do get people writing comments and I'm just kind of like why would you write that like if you don't enjoy it just leave um, and that's often 99% of the time it's about the music I choose to use in my videos and as you know if you're a follower of me I use classical music as background music for my videos because I'm a violinist and I also think it's a point of difference and I personally love it so if you don't like classical music either stick like either get over it because I actually don't like all the doof doof music that most gurus use in their background music but I'm like their, co their content is good just because it's not my taste with the music I'm not there to watch like I'm not there to listen to the music that's just there to kind of put something on the background like I'm there to see the makeup and I'm there to hear them talk about products so I'm just like get over it but um I've also I will keep putting classical music on my videos and violin music and stuff that I record myself because I've exposed so many people to awesome classical music and just you know getting them in the door considering going to a classical concert you know I had one lady say that she's going to see the NZSO because of me like I inspired her to go to a classical concert that is what this is all about this is why I do YouTube with classical music is my background music because that's who I am and I'm gonna I'm gonna keep doing it so to the haters <laughs> I'm not gonna stop Meek Gittos asks what is one thing that you can't do or you can't do very well oh, I tend to not try and do things I know I wouldn't be good at I would be hopeless at rock climbing for example I would fall to my death because I've got very bad upper body strength so therefore like I just don't even try doing something like that Anna Sophia asks who are your greatest inspirations and who can I relate to now this I've mentioned this actually last week in my um, October, November favorites <laughs> and it was November and my greatest inspiration at the moment for my channel and for like my beauty guru career you could say would be Anna from Viviana does makeup she's just so cool <laughs> like she's just such an awesome girl and I absolutely love her channel I love the aesthetic of it like I love how she isn't too frilly and she doesn't really do like I don't know she doesn't try too hard her videos are just good and her content's just perfect so I really love watching her videos and she's just absolutely my biggest inspiration at the moment heading over to Instagram um, my name's not Kezia asks who I, I know you're Kezia just don't even try and hide um, she asks who are your favorite Kiwi slash Aussie beauty youtubers this is hard because I love a bunch, but I might just name my top ones because I, if I try and name all the ones I watch, we'll be here a while. <laughs> Obviously Shannon, a huge inspiration to me. Geo from Makeup by Geo, absolutely gorgeous. Um, Sally from Sally Jo, Liv from X Liv Loves Makeup, Hannah from Hannah Carson, Anna Lee from Leather and Lace, and then over the ditch I love Lauren Curtis, Chloe Morello, Rachel from Rachel Lee, who I mentioned last week and my favourites. Oh, and Kat from Katrina Beauty Blog. She's really cute too. Jordan Ashley C asks, what is your favourite part and least favourite parts of doing your makeup? Um, my favourite part would be my base. I actually love doing my foundation and getting my base looking perfect. 
so that definitely is very satisfying when you finally get your face looking gorgeous my least favorite part would be my brows only because they're a bit different every day and you sort of don't have a normal formula that turns out the same each day so it's kind of frustrating um yeah that would be the least favorite part Maylee 1202 asks what's your favorite violin piece you've played and who's your favorite composer oh i like this one so my favorite violin piece that i've played would definitely be the zhimanovsky's violin concerto number no. one um, I'll put a link to it down below, so if you want to have a listen to it, you can. Actually, it was the piece I put, I uploaded, the piece I was playing, that I was like, a little treat for my subscribers, in case you wanted to see me playing violin, that's what I was playing. I love that piece, it's stunning. But I will link to you also a video of it with orchestra, because I was playing with piano and it's n nowhere near as good with piano. And my favourite composer is definitely Britain at the moment, Benjamin Britten, he's a stunning um, British composer. Um, his works for violin are extraordinary and I have played some of his stuff before but the, my favorite piece by him that would be my favorite piece I've played but I haven't actually played it yet so that will become my favorite piece I've played because it is his violin concerto and it is stunning like it is gorgeous I'll definitely upload a recording when I do record it eventually. Meg uh, Gitos I hope I'm saying your name right Meg I know Meg but um, I've never had to pronounce her last name <laughs> Gitos? Please correct me. You can laugh at me in um, chat. <laughs> What's your go-to selfie pose? Probably... Probably something like this, like a little bit tilted, like turn my body this way, turn my face this way, and then look into the camera like... It's different with every makeup look as well, on what I'm trying to emphasize. I'm trying to emphasize my lips, I'll do a different kind of pose if I'm trying to emphasize my eyes. If I'm trying to emphasize my eyes, I'll definitely go for something where I can like lift my eyebrow a little bit so you can kind of see the eyeshadow because my eyelids kind of droop a little bit. Jamie Thompson asks, if you could only use one brand of makeup for the rest of your life, what would you choose? It was easy for me to pick this. I would pick MAC and that's only because they have everything in every category I could use. Um, I can wear their foundation, they've got a colour for me and obviously Studio Fix Fluid. Um, they have concealer I can use, they've got setting powders, they've got eyeshadows in abundance, they've got my favourite lipsticks are MAC lipsticks. Um, I've never tried the mascaras but I'm sure I could, you know, like a mascara is a mascara, whatever. Um, they've got eyeliners, lip pencils, blushes are amazing, their highlighter is amazing, like they've got everything I would need. So, like I love NARS, NARS would be my second pick, but unfortunately they don't have a foundation I can wear, so they've got the concealer in it, I love their setting powders, their blushes, their lipsticks, their eyeshadows, everything by NARS is amazing, except they don't make a colour for me in the foundation, because Sheer Glow has a colour called Siberia, which is very pale, but it's quite yellow based, so it doesn't quite suit my undertone, which is a real shame. They need to come out with something just as light, but a little bit more pink based. Rue asks, what is your skincare routine? I mentioned that before, so you've already heard that. 05 Mervs asks, what is the best and worst thing about living in Oz? I can't ask this before, like, best would be the climate, and the worst would be the creepy crawlies. Yay! All the animals, because everything here wants to try and kill you. <laughs> Lucy Allen 16 Hi Lucy, I talk to you on email all the time. Your favourite blushes that don't look OTT on fair skin? Now that is a good question. I have answered that on my top cheek products for pale skin video which I'll link below for you so I basically have all my top products for like bronzers blushes and highlighters and stuff for pale skin so that's it for my video today I hope you guys enjoyed this Q&A don't forget to follow me on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter if you feel like it as well um, I don't really have very many Twitter followers so I didn't really ask it on Twitter but if you follow me on those then you'll get notified if, if I'm doing another Q&A in the future so I can answer your questions and I always enjoy them. They're very fun. So thank you very much for those that contributed today to today's video. And don't forget to give this a big thumbs up if you do like it. Because giving me a rating helps get my video out there heaps more on YouTube. It just basically works by the more thumbs up you get, the more your video will be promoted. And I know that a lot of you like it. So all you have to do is push the like. 
And if you disliked it, then don't be a noob, just leave the video, don't dislike it, because that's real stink. So I hope you guys did enjoy it though, and if you enjoyed it enough, you could even subscribe to my channel, because I make weekly videos, and I'd love to have you part of my YouTube family here. And until next week, where I'll be bringing you a Christmas tutorial, have a great week, and see you next time.